Hello, oh, can you? Uh... Yeah, can you? Good evening. Oh, good evening. Yeah. Nice uh, to have you join us this evening on the news. And I'll say a big uh, congratulations on the part over there. Thank you. Yes. Now, uh, let's go straight to the business of the day, which is uh, a word about uh, Ms. Kemi Badenok uh, and also the British uh, politics. Now, what can you say, tell us about uh, uh, Ms. Kemi herself? And also, let's say, talk about even the British politics. Thank you. The emergence of Kemi Badenok as the leader of the Conservative Party was not unexpected because she has been part of the part of the party since 2017 when she will become the first uh, when she called the MP. She was mostly in her IT and her banking career before she joined the party. So you know after having lost the election in July to to the I mean, Labour Party, the Conservative Party needs to win back the voters. They need to they need to be united and they need leaders with novel ideas, they need smart leaders that could bring the party together and convince the British politics. And the election, initially, James Cleverly was highly favored to become the, the party leader after the defeat of Sunik, Prime Minister Suni. But in the first round of the election, James Cleverly came third, came in battle not case, taken forward by Jenrick. And after the last round of the election, it was obvious that Kemi will emerge as the party leader because she's a smart politician. She was able to convince the uh, member of parliament um, of the Conservative Party and the electoral that she has, I mean, she can be the party together. Be, though she was not revealing her policies in details compared mm -hmm. to compared to um, James Cleverly and Henry. And the, the problem is that most of the solutions that those two officials were presenting to address the common problem of immigration, on the economy, of foreign policies, on climate change. They were not special. For, they were then new from most of what, most of the solutions that have been proposed to those electorate before. But Kemi was not going to give reveal in details a policy regarding those topics. I mean, th that may have played a role in her winning the election because she was just being articulating. She was she was smart. She, 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 was, she was telling it the 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 uh, the member MOP that British had to become a competitive economy. Britain must learn to in, to have smart international regulations. I mean, she was like making them to know that the problem, that the challenge that Britain faces is not uh, is not different from from what most of the biggest economies in the world are facing. Mm. But they need, I mean, they need to they need to have smart international regulations. And, I mean, come up with policies that will make me Britain to be a competitive economy. And I mean, she won the. I mean, she, won, she eventually she won the election and become the the Conservative Party. So the big task before her now is she has to unite the party. She she has to. I mean, she's going to become the main opposition to Sir Kim, Sir Kim, then Prime Minister Case Case Timer. So um, she has the big task. Which what that yet to that in 15 years she may actually become the first black. Prime Minister, British Prime Black Prime Minister, because the Conservative Party remains the biggest party after I mean after the Labour Party. Though there's still the Liberal Democracy or the Green Party, but I believe okay. that the Conservative Party still has a lot of I mean they are still very I mean it's still, still a dominant party in British politics and 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 I mean Kemi Badlock has a which role to play in uh, in in uh, in uni 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 uniting the party and I mean I mean, convincing the electorate to believe in the parties again. Okay, uh, I think that's a, a big one. At least been uh, playing smart by now, actually revealing uh, what, uh, what uh, our policies, uh, just yeah. like the others who are also revealing theirs. But now I want to bring this uh, linking uh, uh, this uh, this election now to uh, Nigeria. Now you know, we can, if we look at the two, we have the UK elections and Nigeria elections. Now, what do you think? Uh, can, we, we can learn from it because most women coming out to you know, context of elections now is all about, oh, I mean, women, equality, equality, uh, let them equality and uh, let women vote for women and the likes. But this, she coming out and post, people seeing uh, what she's ready to bring out, what she's ready to deliver. Uh, I don't see this playing in Nigeria, in Nigeria politics. What do you think are the lessons that? Uh, we Nigerians can actually learn from this, especially when it comes to the political system. 
Man, Nigerian politics has a lot to learn from the British or Western politics. You know, in the okay. West, politics are based on issues. They are based on competency and capability and technicality. Yes. I mean, the problems that we face as a nation in Nigeria are structural problems. The unemployment, the economic, economic imbalances, the internal in insecurity, the high inflation, high interest rates requires competent politicians that understood global discourse that can provide practical solutions to our indigenous problem, to, to problem, problem, solutions that suit our social economic realities. So, I mean, it is high time that the countries begin to do things differently. We need okay. to look in, we need to start looking for competent politicians, smart politicians that will, that will, I mean, that will, that will provide practical solutions to our problems because Nigeria is I a mean, potentially Nigeria is a dominant economy in terms of economic resources, mineral resources, ecological resources. But what is lacking is the leadership resources to amass those potentials to become possibility possibilities. Because basically, political appointees in Nigeria is, is based on religious factors. I mean, it's based on ethnic politics. About okay. but we cannot develop an economy by ethnic politics. You need smart politicians that could provide solutions to our problems rather than adopting the so-called the neoliberal policies of the IMF and World Bank that has not helped the country since the end of mm -hmm. since 1989 through the social development programs. So to, today, I mean, we have, we, we have we have a lot of problems that is, that is confronting the nation that across smart solution that the craft technical solutions so i mean the emergence of kenny kenny badnock shows that what I me mean, i mean it's not a coincidence she said she's one of the most smartest politician in british politics mm. she has been there for seven years she was a minister for trade for, for trade and business under president Sunix. Yes. i mean she has come with fantastic ideas or not that that are f that that f the the, the conservative party in the past five to six years so what I'm trying to say in essence is that in Nigeria, if you must develop the economy, you must yeah. address our problem. It must become a competent economy. For example, we need politicians that know how things work. We need technicality. We need qualified and highly technical politicians at the mm. end of our political affairs. Yeah, thank you very much. Alice Upa at uh, uh, Nigeria actually take a cue from this and also learn from uh, how the UK play their politics and even how the citizens over there uh, actually vote and also elect the leaders of, to uh, guide them in the terms of affairs of the nation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Festus. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's glad to have you join us this evening. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.